Okay, uh, lecture 11, we'll continue to discuss the geometry of curved space. And uh, in the uh, last lecture, we, we have shown that the, you can have a so-called intrinsic geometric description by distance measurements. Uh, the key quantity is the metric tensor, which relates the distance measurements, uh, the s square, to the chosen coordinates, uh, x mu, x nu. And so in this lecture, we're going to show uh, an example, a concrete example, how knowing the metric can determine geometry. In particular, we can see how we can derive so-called the geodesic equation from the knowing the from the knowledge of metric. And from this, we go on to discuss how the equivalent physics uh, led Einstein to the idea of a, a metric theory of gravity. Uh, so we're going to talk about geodesic uh, as an example of the geometry determined by the metric. Uh, geodesic is a curve, so for any curve, we can write as a set of coordinates depends on a curve parameter tau. In which the parameter tau can vary from say tau one, tau tau three, and trace out a series of coordinates uh, x tau one, x tau two, x tau three, and uh, so that's the uh, trace out a curve. Here. For example, tau can be the time variable, so change the time, you change uh, position, and that gives you the trajectory. For if we want to know the length from an initial position to a final position, and uh, uh, as you simply integrate over the ds infinitesimal length, and since we only talk about length at ds square, so you know the square root of ds square, and ds square is said is the rate to coordinates to the metric. So s is integral of the square root of s square, and uh, we're going to uh, multiply by d tau, then divide by d tau into uh, the expression s. Uh, uh, d tau is outside the square root, so inside the square root of d tau square, so what d tau, so dx d tau, d mu d tau. In other words, <coughs> we're going to also write the notation using notation dx d tau as x dot. Then this integrand s is uh, is a function l, which is, of course depends position through the metric and the x dot and then d, d tau. Okay, so l is just just. We want to determine uh, between these two fixed points the shorter length of the curve. What is the curve that has the shortest length? By the extremization condition, that uh, by variation of the curve, uh, so that the length is the extremum, ds delta s equals zero, or fixed initial final point. And through the calculated variation, you can show this the condition in order for this variation s equals zero is the Euler Lagrangian equation. Okay, L is this integrand. Uh, hopefully you have seen the oil languages before, but anyway, uh, I'm going to start from uh, review for you here. Uh, often in physics, we like to use the principle of these actions. So for example, the equation of motion or field equation can be thought of as to be the euler Lagrangian equation resulting from the actualization of some action integral. So the action integral for field equation gave you a field action for uh, equation motion give you equation motion. So it's some action into variation and the integrand is called the Lagrangian. In contrast the actualization of a function so f of t, uh, x, uh, you, you vary x to find the maximum of, of or minimum of f with the condition that would be simply the first derivative of x equals zero. Here, we're not very a single variable, we vary the entire function, okay? It was between fixed point, we're changing the whole curve. And uh, we ask when would the curve 
would be have the maximum or minimum uh, length, and uh, so we didn't really into the oil Lagrange equation. You know, instead, the f dx equals zero for this condition, which is much more complicated, uh, is just uh, is equivalent to this for the simple case of maximum of single function. Let me show this. Okay. So we want to uh, extremize the s. So therefore, we need to do extremize this integral. But in terms of integrand, delta l is because l depends on x and x dot. So it's, uh, variation of l is partial of l is equal to x uh, del x partial but to x dot del x dot. Okay. So we'll put this into here. Now for the second term, this del x dot, we can write as delta x dot is that definitely dx d tau. Now whether this del and the differential, the order can be changed. So therefore, this can be thought as delta d d tau of delta x. And we're going to choose to write this way. because So this both term have delta x. And uh, we can show by manipulation of the second term, we can write this integral in this form, which leads to all the Lagrange equation. Okay. Well, the first term, of course, just, just fact out the delta x here. It's the second term. The second term, what we're going to do, we're going to integrate it by parts. Let me rem recall for you, integral by parts simply is the d some, some product function, f and g. So dfg is f dg plus g df. So therefore, the integral f dg is equal to the uh, left-hand side, which is a perfect differential. Therefore, integral different differential, just f and g evaluate at the limits of the integrations. Okay. And then, of course, I have a minus, move this to the other side, minus g df. So now, we're interested in this term. So we can identify the, the parts respect to x dot as the f function, and uh, <coughs> the I can cancel the d tau. So the this is uh, uh, I can write this as d delta x. So therefore, uh, uh, I can identify the g function as delta x. Okay. So the f of g is parts respect to x dot. Multiply g, d, uh, multiply g, which is delta x, evaluate at the limits integration. I forgot to write x tau, between tau one, tau at tau one, tau two, and then the minus g is tau x, and f is partial but tau of d, the partial of l is to x dot. Now the first term actually vanishes because we're working with curves with fixed endpoints. So therefore, del x at tau 1 equals 0, del x tau 2 equals 0. So therefore, this, this first factor equals 0. And the second factor, again, I'm going to multiply d tau and divide by d tau. So therefore, I have delta x d tau and differential of this L dot with respect, respect to tau. And then we get this term here. Because now both terms has dx d tau can factor out. And in fact, you have uh, this variation is put to zero, so the integral must be zero because it's arbitrary x d tau. So we can oil the graduate equation. Now, I just want to make a mathematical comments. You will get the same Euler Lagrangian whether you start with L as the square root of this quantity or without the square root. In fact, any power of this will get the same uh, Euler Lagrangian equation. Obviously, it's easier to work with without the square root, so I we're going to work with Lagrangian without the square root. Then it's the partial back to x dot, it's simply the two x dots, so the two g mu x dot. And then uh, differential of L respect to x, because it depends on x and x dot treat as independent variables, so therefore only the part respect to the metric multiplied by the x dot term. So part respect to x is, I just copied over, and this copied over here, but I have to remove this, is, I have to differentiate respect to tau. 
So this is the geodesic equation. You know, is this the condition required for the curve to be uh, have extreme length? Okay. And uh, such a curve we call a geodesic equation. Geodesic curve. Okay. Now let's check something we are familiar with. That's in the flat plane we expect the geodesic curve to be a straight line. Let's see what it comes out. For flat plane, where you, let's take Cartesian coordinates x and y, the metric is just a constant delta a b, and the first term because the difference between position is zero, so first term vanishes. So the second term, and again x is, is independent of 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 a uh, position independent of tau, so therefore it really just differs back to the, uh, the tau x. So it gets the so index a and b, the one and two, give you two equations. Uh, x double tau equals zero, y double tau equals zero. And they have the solution, of course, x equals a plus b tau, or y equals c plus d tau, a, b, c, d are constants. And to combine this equation by eliminating tau, I'll get the relation between x and y, except some constant plus x constant. So that's the equation for a straight line in the xy plane. And uh, you can work out more complicated. Let's find the geodesic for uh, for spherical surface. These are the great circles. So now we're going to put geodesic equation here into the so-called the standard form, uh, the, the form that you will usually see when people write down geodesic equations. We notice that the <coughs> the first term. <coughs> Here, differential with respect to, to tau, it's back to the second term I get, of course, second derivative with tau. Then, differential with the metric, the metric depends on tau, it's entire through the, its uh, coordinates x, so therefore I should write this tg dx dx d tau uh, times the constant x dot. Okay. Now, let's look at the structure of the second term. Uh, I can call it the part. The red part and the green part. The red part, you notice, can be written as x star right x bar is the x sigma d tau. So clearly, this term is symmetric into interchange. If I interchange these two derivatives, they make a difference. So therefore, it's symmetric respect to interchange index rho and sigma. Okay. The green part of this term, I can divide, separate into. Uh, so I can multiply. I can add a term, subtract a term. The first term is symmetric respect to interchange of sigma and rho. The second term is anti-symmetric. We we'll get a minus sign when I interchange sigma and rho. Okay. Now, because the, the red part is symmetric, so that the anti-symmetric part, the green part, multiply the symmetric part will get zero. So therefore, only the symmetric part will contribute. So therefore, this second term can be written the symmetric part multiply the uh, this factor here. So therefore, this Euler-Lagrange equation can be written as uh, the first is this term I just copied over, and uh, the, uh, the symmetric part is due to this here. Both have both this uh, term have a uh, uh, sigma sigma new term here, and uh, so I can factor this the term here. So I have the, this came from the original geodesic equation. So, geodesic equation. So we we'll put uh, <coughs> the next step. I just uh, I want to get rid of this the, the metric term here by contracting or multiplying the an the inverse metric, which is a metric with upper indices, okay. and I'll multiply this and the first term. I get rid of the metric term. The second term, of course, still have this, and this coefficient. Is now has the metric term inverse metric multiply this derivative of the metric here. This combination, the first derivative of the metric is called the Christopher symbol. Okay, is the first derivative, and it's then vanishing because in the metric it's directly related to coordinates. So in the curved space, the bases are position dependent, so the metric is position dependent. So therefore, the first derivative does not vanish. So we have a non-vanished Christopher symbol for curved space, for sure. 
Of course, in flat space, if you leave with working with curved linear, you also will get the Christopher symbol. Now, the gamma is called symbols because because the spice we write it was indices mu and u rho sigma. These are not actually tensor components. It was under a coordinate transformation. Gamma uh, do not transform properly under uh, as a, as a tensor components. So so in fact, a lot of people do not choose to write this. What they write it completely different symbols, and so to, to to remind you, these are not tensors. But I think it's it's simple enough. We just write uh, stick with the index. Uh, notation and but we will show even though this is not a tensor turns out the second the, the, the order derivative is not also tensor and their the extra term they get in transformation cancel each other so therefore it turns out this equation is a tensor equation the so geodesic equation actually are tensor equations and now we so far we talked about geodesic as one with the extreme length and of course, we also usually think that geodesic also a straight line. So that's discussed in box 5.2. So, and this is the end of first part of lecture 11.